myself is my inheritance, my prize, my food, my dream, my highest joy. Gosh, oneplace.com, you can listen to things. Because one of the things that I've come to learn is we all learn differently. And it always makes me laugh when I hear people, my son's going to school to be a teacher, and I hear, um, you know, they're trying to all these different methods to help people learn the word, because you get discouraged. Has anybody in here ever felt inferior when you're in a class and you've gotten called on, and you're thinking, yeah, I mean, I have too, and people purposely make you feel like you're an idiot. Sometimes, because, you know, they walk around, I know everything there is to know about everything there is to know, and you can't possibly tell me anything. Well, I am of, of the opinion that I'm going to be a lifelong learner, and you might be able to learn something from me, but I'm also going to be able to receive from you. Because maturity is not an age, and it has nothing to do with how long you've been walking with the Lord. Trust me. Because I know people that have been walking with the Lord for decades, and they still can't get past Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Okay? It's line upon line, precept upon precept, and you should know more this year than you did last year. And next year, you should know more next year than you do right now. You're continually building, and you are getting prepared for a lifelong journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is like a diamond, and he has many facets. And every time you turn him, he has a brilliance that you can't comprehend. And everything that you're going through in your life... There, he, he talks about it in his word. And if you don't know how to dig it out and you don't know where to go, you are going to flounder, you're going to falter, and you're going to say this Christianity stuff don't work. Well, let me tell you something. It's not because God doesn't work and he's not faithful. It's because we're lazy and we don't want to dig. And we think because somebody else made it through that everything that they're going through, uh, you know, that it should be easy. I don't know where people got the fact that walking with the Lord was going to be easy. He said, you will have tribulation, but, there's always a but, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Okay, Jason Upton, when Zach was singing the song, you know, there's a wall. Did you know that eagles are representative of the gifts of the spirit, of the prophetic movement? And um, I want to let you know that if your name is David in here, uh, your name means beloved. Bet you didn't know that. We went to juvenile hall one night, and uh, there was a kid named David that was in Van Horn, and I was ministering to him with some of the other guys, and I went to Walmart to pick some stuff up because it's on the way home, and I was thinking about our conversation with David, and I said, Lord, how do I get him to know that you're real? And you know what? The lady that checked me out at Walmart, you know what her name was? Beloved. What? I looked at her name tag and I busted out laughing. And he says, just when you think that I don't know what's up, think again. There's little, there's little things that God does that will be specific to you that you will appreciate. And I could tell you stories like that for years. But um, if you've ever come to a situation where you felt inferior for learning... And um, one of the other things that cracks me up is they're starting to go to gender-specific schools where they separate the boys and the girls because apparently boys and girls are different. I didn't know that, did you? <laughs> so, um, you know, I've taught Sunday school and I've taught all the way up through adults and, um, you know, I have a son and I homeschooled Anthony and um, he was just into everything. And when I homeschooled him, I was right up in his face the whole time. And I knew how he learned because as a parent, it's my job to know my son. Okay, this is translating into your relationship with God. And if you didn't have a parent that knows you, you have a God in heaven that loves you and reveals mysteries. So I want you to get a revelation on that. So when I figured out, Anthony would get in trouble a lot, not because he, was, uh, he wasn't comprehending the material, but because he was bored. He was in third grade. He was doing sixth grade work. I would think, okay. I never even told him what he was doing. I would just go here and do this. I didn't measure that. He graduated high school two years early. He graduated college when he was 18. 
you know, he's going to be graduating early. Why? Because I think they spend too much time on recess and lunch, but hey, that's me. Um, um, so you're a different learner. And did you know I'm left-handed, okay? Left-handed people learn differently than right-handed people. Okay, and I, you know, I, I've always had an issue with I didn't learn the way everybody else learned, and I really didn't fit in the box. Okay, and, and those of you that know me a little bit better, you work with me, you know I don't fit in anybody's mold, and you shouldn't either. We're all unique. I'm different. Okay, I don't can, I don't sew. I can cook, doesn't mean I enjoy it. Um, I'm just, I'm just different. I'm not, God made me unique like he made you unique. And you need to find out what your learning style is and why you are on this planet. You are here to serve the living God. And you need to find out where your niche is and how you're supposed to learn. And you can learn different ways to learn. Okay, what I learned, most of it was not in the church. It was driving back and forth to L.A. for four years, four hours a day, in the car listening to the radio. Just me and God. If you're an audio learner, good. If you're a video learner, great. If you learn doing this, I don't want you to feel because, you know, I've heard before, well, my brain shot out, I've been on drugs for all these years. You know what? God can restore that. So that's really not an excuse Go to the store and buy some index cards for 50 cents and work on one scripture verse. I don't care if it takes you all year. That's what I did. I would take a scripture verse and just write it out and put it on my computer monitor at work and I would work on one verse a week. It's not that hard. There's no magic formula for substituting for time, effort, and energy. If you want to serve this God that you say you know, you have to make a step and you have to do something about it. You are not going to have a productive relationship with someone you don't spend any time with. I'm just trying to be real here. I got a short amount of time and a lot of stuff to get done. But I'm trying to give you practical wisdom because the world is real out there and it's harsh. Or as, as Jason Lee likes to say, it's rugged. It's rugged out there. And people don't cut you no slack. You know, maybe you go to the churches and they go, oh, you know, we love Teen Challenge and we love the choir and all that, but not everybody's from the church. They don't want to hear what you got to say. They want to know, is your life changed? Because my God says, I can heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out devils. If he did it, how much more do we need it today? Because there's demonically oppressed people out there. Some of you were demonically oppressed. You had addictions. You know, let's get real here. Some of you have been suicidal. Maybe you've even had an out-of-body experience or you've, you've had a near-death experience. And you got scared because you saw some stuff. I've heard testimonies of people seeing demons, seeing all kinds of things, and they'll, people come up to me and they'll go, well, you know, you might think I'm crazy. I don't think you're crazy, because I know that stuff's real. I know it's real. So Psalm 1, when you got your inductive Bible study, we're going to kind of move a little bit around here and spend a little time on inductive study. We're going to go briefly through Psalm 1 and through Psalm 23, because I want to give you an outline of what, you, what I want you to do. I'm also going to give you some websites, and we're going to watch a 10-minute video, because if you don't know what learning style you are, you need to figure that out and start from where you're at. Okay? I learn by all three methods. They have DVD, uh, the Bible's on CD. There's really no excuse. Don't get caught up with, well... Brother, I've been a Christian for 20 years and I've read through the Bible 18,000 times. What's your problem? Forget that. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful for them. Okay? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It always used to frustrate me. Kids would come into my youth group and they'd go to churches or whatever it was or concerts and they'd give them this big old, you know, Dake's Concordance in a Study Bible and load them down with 150 pounds of books and go, here, read this. What? <laughs> Most of the kids that we discipled, and I didn't say they just went to church, 
His church is not the kingdom. Disciple, lifelong learner, discipline. Ooh, we don't like that word. Learn most of it in our house. Leaders, we're accountable. Come look at my house. Is my house clean? Do I live up to what I'm saying? Look in my fridge. What's in my fridge? I've gone to people's houses that are Christians and they had brewskis in their fridge. These are people in leadership. I run into people at the grocery store buying 12 packs of cigarettes. Uh, what? Wait a minute. Woe to those that tell people one thing and do something else in secret. It's all about being in his presence. The worship songs that we listened to this morning, it's about getting in God's presence. Moses was on Mount Sinai. He glowed with the presence of God. The presence faded when he didn't spend as much time with God. But it says he went to the tabernacle of meeting and he said, Moses, talk to God as a man talks to his friend. Think about that. Okay, Psalm 1. Got a pen? I want you to under, underline some words. Because if you use this, this is not a one, it's, it's, this is a one size fits all method, but methods change. And if you've ever gone to a pet store or a fish store, I, I like to use this analogy because God is very creative and he will use different methods to speak to you. You ever gone into the fish tanks? And they have these fish that are these brilliant reds and blues and greens. And there's even translucent fish where you can see their little gills and their hearts beating. And, I, and people look at it and go, wow, that's evolution. And I go, wow, that's God. How, how can you, what? How can you say that that just happened? And I look at the different animals and I look at the different faces here and I think we serve a creative God. The methods that we use to get the gospel out may change, but the message of the cross and the blood covenant and what Jesus did should never change because religion binds, the spirit gives life. Okay? It's not about what you say, it's all about what you do. Okay? Blessed is the man who does not, who walks, underlying walks, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So what did we underline? Walking, standing, sitting. Don't hang out with ungodly knuckleheads. Well, they're my friends. Yeah, well, how many times have they written you? How many times have they called you? They only come around when they hear you're out of jail or out of wherever, and they want to go help you get some, score some stuff. Dude, you're out. Let's go. No, oh, man, I ain't doing that no more. What? You think you're better than us? No, I'm just a saved sinner, saved by grace, and I don't do that anymore because I got to take Jesus with me wherever I go, and he don't get loaded. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates. Okay, it's not vegetate. It's not. This word meditate, you ever gone to have a really good steak dinner, like at an expensive restaurant? We went, there was a friend of ours, a family friend, his name's Tim. Tim was a big guy, he was construction, and we, we were, I think we went to his house, and he got these big old ribeye steaks, and, and we're sitting down eating, Three bites, the steak was gone. And I was eating my steak, and I looked at him, and it finally dawned on me that Tim ate the whole thing in three bites. And I said, dang, dude, you must have been hungry. He didn't enjoy his steak. He didn't meditate on it. It means to chew, to meditate on the word. Okay? It means to read this scripture verse. Let's go back to verse 1. Blessed is the man or woman who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't go to people who are not godly and ask them for their advice because they can't help you. Do not run to the phone, you run to the throne. Do not go to ungodly people. They don't know what you're talking about. The people, they don't have the spirit to give them liberty, enlightenment from God. They don't have godly wisdom or counsel. You need to go to someone that has meditated, who has 
been seasoned in the word and who has enough sense to tell you if they don't know the answer, they'll go look it up and come back to you. Because if they have the answer for everything all the time, you know, have to get in specifics about that, but we need to chew on the word. We need to take a scripture. You ever been reading your word and you read this scripture and it kind of just leaps off the page and you're like, wow, that's great. I don't know what I just read, but that was great. That's your spirit, man, saying you've just got an injection. You've got some revelation. You've got revelation, wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 1. That's what we need to walk in. I'll give you some personal experiences and we'll finish reading this psalm and then we're going to flip over to Psalm 22. When I'm out and about, I'm shopping, I'll, I could be in shorts and a t-shirt. People always think I work there. Why? I guess I must walk around like I know what I'm doing. Why? Because I have confidence and authority. I don't knuckle people in the head unless they need it. But... Um, I just, you have to get a revelation on who you are in Christ. I never tell, I never see Jesus telling anybody they're stupid. Get away from me, I don't have time for you. I never see him telling anybody that asks for healing to come back later, he's tired. I, I never see that. I see people going to Jesus and I read he had compassion on them. We get calloused when we've, got an ungodly counsel that doesn't work and we go, I'm not going to mess with those people because you know, well, it, everything all the time never works for me. That's not true. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He works all the time, every time. You just have to ask him. You might not like the answer. <laughs> That's why some of you don't ask because you don't want to hear the truth. So, Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river. River, what do we need when you feel dry? More water. <laughs> What's the Holy Spirit? Rivers of living water. There's a river. There's a mighty river flowing. There's churches called the river. It says there's a river that's going to come from the throne of God in the book of Revelation that says there's not going to be, there's, there's river the sustenance. You can't grow any plants without water. You die after a couple days without water. You ever trim a tree and you throw the branches aside? It looks okay for the first day. Second day kind of starts to wither. Third day, the leaves get all crusty. That's how Christians get when they don't stay attached to the vine. Crusty, bitter, pickle puss Christians who walk around thinking that everybody is everything, everybody else's fault, and they don't absolve any. They they absolve themselves from any responsibility, and they try to blame everybody else. So, must have hit some nerves. Because everybody's like, whoa. I just, we live in a time where you need to get this right. Because this generation is a generation that's going to see a lot of stuff happening. Woe to those that call good evil and evil good. And if you think that some of the people, the, you're, you got to change your mind. You be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everything that is against this word Jesus is right and you're wrong. I remember sitting in my kitchen table and reading this going, I can't do this. This is totally impossible. Forgive those who have hurt me and persecuted me and spoken evil against me. Jesus says, yeah, because I did it. And anything that he did, we can do. He gives you the power through his spirit to do it. He doesn't need me to defend him. He just needs me to obey. Am I saying it's easy? No. No. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And they're not. This is the way we go to church, go to church, go to church. This is the way we go to church and be really bored. If you're bored, it's your fault. Because my God is not boring. I I'm just trying to be real here because I have kids that tell me, oh, God's not doing anything in my life. Well, 
what are you doing? You're sitting home, you're playing video games for 18 hours a day till your eyeballs fall out. You're on the phone, you're texting like there's no tomorrow. I get kids that laugh at me because I don't text. And I say, you know what? If you care about me and I'm that important to you, pick up the phone. You want to text? That's your business. I don't text. I would rather sit one-on-one -on -one and talk to you and be able to pray for you and lay hands on you. And I have friends all over the world and all over the United States. I send email that talking to them is just not feasible. But if we see each other every day, sometimes you may even walk past me and I'll give you a funny look and you're like, what's that all about? That means I'm praying for you because God has showed me that you need to be prayed for. Sometimes he tells me specific things. Sometimes he doesn't. So I don't want you to get afraid and go, well, I'm not going to walk by her. Um, but sometimes, don't, don't we just need somebody to come up behind us and put our hand on us and say, you know what? God loves you and he cares about you. I'm praying for you. There's no mystery about that. We're his hands and we're his feet. You should be able to do that to each other. So... But he shall be a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. God's seasons are not winter, spring, summer, or fall. Some seasons last for several weeks. Some seasons last for several years. He determines the seasons in your life. But there's always some kind of fruit. Don't try to tie on plastic fruit. Whose leaf does not wither. We talked a little bit about that. And whatever he does shall prosper. He's not talking about monetary prospering only. He's talking about your life, your growth, your relationships, your family. What do people say about you when you're not around? Character is what you are when nobody's looking. You guys have all heard that, right? Some people are going to talk smack about you because they can't control you or manipulate you anymore. Whatever. This is what I do. Can't change what people think about you. I only care what God thinks about me. There's a, there's a Bible teacher in Reading, Bethel. His name's Bill Johnson. He said, he gives a teaching about, you know, the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts where they cast out devils in Jesus' name, but they're not Christians. And he says, you know, they, if you read the story, the, the demon-possessed people, they beat these guys up and they run off naked. And they say, Paul we know, but Jesus, and Jesus we know, but who are you? He said, I know, uh, not only want my name known in heaven, I want my name known in hell. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. So, with the ungodly, verse 4, are not so. Comparison, contrasting. Psalms and Proverbs is all about comparison and contrasting. And he says, with the ungodly are not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. Chaff is a byproduct that's empty. And it looks like wheat, but there's no substance to it. That's why Jesus says the wheat will be gathered up into um, bundles, but the chaff will be tossed away and burned. These are unproductive Christians. Well, they're not even Christians. I shouldn't say that. These are unproductive people that say all the right things, but there's no substance to their life. They think that they're believers, but they haven't changed their lifestyle. Because one of the things that I constantly hear is, well, Jesus loves me, and, you know, I just, you know, come as you are. Well, that's, that's true. And he does love us, but he's also a God of righteousness, he's a God of judgment, and he's a God of holiness. You cannot continue in your, other, in your old lifestyle and think that God's going to bless that. I don't know why. <laughs> and I'm just telling you, these are conversations that I've actually had, so I'm not picking on anybody. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> God doesn't bless me. I got a call last night. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. You're shacking up with this guy. You're fornicating. You're doing blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. What do you want me to tell you? I, I, I don't know. I can't fix this for you. I told you when this happened, this is my godly counsel. Don't do that. <laughs> you chose not to listen to it. I don't know. I'll pray for you, 
but you have to remove yourself from that situation, change your mindset, and turn around. That's what repentance is. Turning around and going the other direction. In God's direction. So, verse 5, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. He already knows. It says he declares the end from the beginning. Let's flip over to Psalm 23. This is a psalm that if you've ever gone to a funeral, it's always on the funeral card. You know, one rapper and Weird Al made it famous as I walk through the valley as I harvest my grain, you know, Weird Al. It's a play on Psalm 23. I've read this song, Psalm pretty much my whole life, and it was one night after the 10 millionth time I read it, oh, the heavens opened and I got a revelation. I went, what? How did, when did that get in there? And I'll show you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See how I read that? Blah, 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 blah. And that's what some of you hear. And when you read it, you're like, okay, I read my three chapters today, and, and, and I'm good. I got I to gotta start at Vacation Bible School because I memorized my verse. Try going to camp and having a room full of girls following you around trying to do their verses. Now I'm going to read it, and I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me. The Lord is my shepherd. He's Liz's shepherd. Insert your name there. I shall not want. He provides everything I need. Not what I think I need. Lord, I want a Lamborghini. He could give you that if he wants to. But you might get a ticket. You didn't want that. Okay, the next part. If you need spiritual, physical, and emotional healing, you need to listen up. Because there's revelation in this, in this psalm. And I'm going to show you why. Because I did. He makes me. Lie down in green pastures. Green pastures, we're sheep, right? Sheep aren't the brightest animals in the world. He makes us lie down. When you have been abused and you are constantly, maybe you were a tweaker and you wouldn't eat for two or three days, okay? You couldn't go to sleep if your life depended on it, right? You were just constantly, give me a toothbrush, who's got a bathroom to clean? Ah! You know, I had friends like that. Seriously, they'd clean their whole house with the toothbrush. They'd be tweaking for days. Okay? He has to make you learn to rest. He makes you lie down in green pastures. Green pasture is not a bad thing to a sheep. I had to learn how to rest because we're our performance-based society. And the better you perform, the more gold stars you get. That's not how it is in God's world. He loves you the way you are. We don't perform to earn his favor. We already have it. We show people, just like in James, faith without works is dead. I don't want to have dead faith. I don't do things to earn God's salvation or to earn his favor. I already have it, and so do you. If you are a born-again, blood-bought believer in Jesus Christ and your sins have been forgiven, you already have God's favor. You don't have to do anything more to get it. You don't have to do anything less to, to push it away. You already have it. You can forfeit it and go, and go back to your old lifestyle like a dog returns to his vomit. But I'm just saying... Perform it. He had to make me lie down in the green pasture. That's a good place to be sometimes. To do nothing but go, Jesus, 
we're going to get to the next part. The rest of this verse says, he leads me beside the still waters. You ever been out here or you've been next to a river and you just feel the calmness and you hear the birds? Every once in a while, God reminds me, you're losing touch with with my presence. You're losing touch with appreciating the simple things because we get so busy. We have cell phones, we have computers, we have Bluetooth, we have iPods, we have da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I shut all that stuff off, really. I will lock myself in my room. My son was making fun of me there, and he goes, dang, Mom, you're singing back there really loud. I'm like, whatever. So I just have to shut everything off. Okay, verse 3. He restores my soul. When I read that, I went, what the? He does it all. I don't have to go to 18 years of counseling. Counseling's good. But if I'm codependent, they don't need to want to be dependent on somebody else. I need to be dependent on on God. Okay? What's your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions? Those are the things that need healing. Okay? So I want you to go back to verse 2 and underline he makes... He leads, he restores, he leads me in paths of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. He values his word above his name. His word and his name are everything. When these people in the book of Acts were casting out demons, the seven sons of Sceva, it was in the name of Jesus Christ. It wasn't in the name of Paul. It wasn't in the name of Apollos. It wasn't in the name of Titus or Timothy or anybody else. It was in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name, the branch, the net sayer. When he was on the cross, you know why the Pharisees got so mad? They put that sign up there and they said, take that sign down because it said, here's Jesus, the branch. The line, the root from Jesse, the branch that sprung up out of nothing. The branch, self-sustaining. Think about that. He's the self-existent one. That's what Jehovah means. Yahweh, that's what it means. The self-existent one. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. He, He doesn't need us to sustain him. We need him to sustain us. Verse four. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You ever seen candy canes? It's a Christian thing. Christian guy did that. Each candy cane has red and white. Red is the blood. White is the purity. There's always three stripes on the candy cane. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Two reasons. First of all, the rod is correction. The shepherd used to take the rod and the sheep was getting out of line. Kabam! Turn them around. If he got too far, he took the crook of the the stick and you yank them back you're like dang lord my neck hurts we'll stop wandering off it's correction it's caring and correction god chastens those whom he loves you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy you here's the part where you go you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows wow but before our cup has to be full We have to empty it of ourselves. Before filling comes, emptying must come. Our dreams, our pride, our arrogance, our agenda. Well, God, this is the way I think you should do it. Forget about that. This is how I pray. Lord, whatever you want to do, I'm up for it. And please, if I miss you, come and get me. Because I don't want to miss it. Surely, goodness and mercy, or goodness and love, what? That's a cleanup crew. We need lots of goodness, lots of mercy, lots of love, because we mess things up. They're constantly cleaning up after us. Goodness and mercy. (laughs) Shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. It's not like the sand lot. Forever. The beast. (laughs) 
did that kind of give you a little bit of a different perspective on reading this and how it's not some magical pie in the sky, you know, you got to take the magic eight ball. What scripture should I read today? It's all good. Start somewhere. If you want wisdom, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want wisdom? Read the Psalms, read the Proverbs. We're going to watch a 10-minute video. You guys can pop that in. I know we're getting a little late. We've got a late start. Take this inductive Bible study thing. I took a class probably about 10 years ago. I think it's very helpful. There's a website down there. It's a whole thing you can buy if you want to. But this, I think if you get a handle on it, you get, get yourself a good dictionary. There's PC study Bibles. Um, Ray Comfort. Um, Way of the Master is a good website. He has a lot of free resources to download. He has Hell's Best Kept Secret and True and False Conversions. Uh, you know, please commit to being a lifelong learner because Jesus is ever... We're going to be in the kingdom for so long, for eternity, and Jesus is so huge the kingdom is ever expanding, and there's never going to be an end to how many facets he has. This is just a little, we can have a little bit of, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. We can have a snippet of what it's going to be like in the age to come. You can walk in that power of authority and change the atmosphere just by having the power of the living God, because what? The kingdom of heaven is within you to cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, heal. He didn't say pray for the sick. What? Yeah, go back and read it. He said, heal the sick. When I got a revelation, I'm like, what? Okay, let's do it, you know. And I have just such a, I'm going to pray for so many people that have back problems because that's an area where I have issues with. I'm going to pray for people because God told me what I make happen for other people, he's going to make happen for me. So whether or not he wants everybody to be healed, when he does it, I don't know. That's God sovereign. But I do know he wants people to get, you know, they're raising people from the dead in Africa. There's this movie called The Lazarus Project. Get your hands on everything you can. You're a video learner. Watch this video. It's ChristianCinema.com. You can buy videos, you can rent them, you can get on the DVD rental. It's like the Christian Netflix. If your style of learning is audio, video, whatever it is, invest money and time in those resources and learn all you can about who this God is that you say you worship. Because I don't know everything. So, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would not allow the enemy to steal what was sown here today. We pray, Father God, that you would seal everything. You would minister to all of us, Lord, through this DVD, through your word, through these study materials, everything that we need, Lord, that pertains to life and to godliness. And Father, we pray that you would somehow bring somebody in our life that we could disciple and that somebody would come in our lives that would disciple us so that we could get to know you, we could just live in your presence and that you would truly anoint our head with oil. You would slather us, Lord. Give us a double portion today to hear your voice and to do your will. We love you, Jesus, and uh, we worship you this day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm addicted to the pleasure.